We are uh, going to continue the Lord of the Rings SNES game, and I am joined today by Charlie Marlowe. That's me. I uh, that is- I hosted a, a podcast called Mystery Shack Look Back. I do uh, an abridged series of the Zelda cartoon called Well Abridge Me Princess, and Dave is in both of those. I am in both of those things. I'm uh, trying to get the Triforce in uh, one of them. Uh, or uh, or I was for a while. Now I'm just kind of vague henchman nonsense. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's right. You got in one. Spoilers. Yeah. You spoiled the whole... But now they don't got to watch it. Let's uh, read some elf names again. Like a yes. bad way to start. There yeah. We, here we got some names. We got- Crowley and Trester. Australian Trester in my soup. Om Twen, of course. Om Twen. Om Twen. Om Twen Wano. Reen Randar. <laughs> Green does not sound like a Tolkien first name. Green Leaf. Uh, Legless Green Leaf. Uh, but just Green as a first name, not so much. Randar either, really. <laughs> that sounds like a, maybe a Tolkien creature, but not a Tolkien name. Uh, it, it sounds like a, a Star Wars creature, like a Rancor or a Rathquar. It sounds like a Tolkien parody, like, uh, uh, Randall, Mr. Randolph, Mr. Nezzer's, uh, Gandalf parody in Lord of the Beans. You should just, uh, purge yourself of all your VeggieTales knowledge. It's not really gonna do you good. <laughs> you could use that part of your brain for something. You're getting up there in years. I could, in theory, but... <laughs> you don't get a choice of this. There's our uh, favorite, Saranthrus Lurie. Now, Saranthrus alone would be hilarious. Let's just <laughs> say that part in our analysis. Saranthrus, yes. And Lurie, uh, out of so is a last name, would be hilarious. Like, these are these are two baggers. Just that, like, it's... <laughs> Both are like a ten out of a ten on a on a on a strange name scale, and then they put them together, and they don't fit together at all, and it's it's just magical. Okay, can we say it? It it truly is magical. I honestly think this section with these elf names officially makes this the most fun I've had playing a Tolkien game. <laughs> in the years I've been streaming games during Tolkien adaptation. It just it just feels like your mouth is not built to say this name. Saranthrus Lurie. Saranthrus Lurie. Which Mystery Science Theater is it? I think it's Touch of Satan, uh, where like the the actress's name is MB Malay, and Sorbo's like, that's not a name, that's a bad scrabble hand. <laughs> no, I'll ex- I'll accept random mystery science theater quotes. That feels like an appropriate thing. <laughs> that, oh, that seems more useful to you than random Veggie Tales knowledge. I wasn't raised Christian. Like your nonsense shouldn't have to be my problem. My new branding is now just uh, you know Doggins.com, making my nonsense your problem. <laughs> As much as I would love to just stay there and read elf names all day, we should get a little farther in this game. Uh, Let me just run this by you. Elf yeah. names. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. I mean, I can't argue with that. <laughs> no. Because that it was not a predicate. <laughs> I can't argue with that unless you phrase it in the form of an argument. Hey, you know what really actually sucks about this game's graphic design? is how it's possible to get into combat behind a fucking tree. In uh, Zelda and Pokemon, trees are just like circles, like bushes, and it doesn't really visually make a whole lot of sense. Like, it's definitely a very cartoony tree, but you can see where you are on all sides of it, so like... For the purposes of game function, I understand that. Like, these trees, I actually do like how they look, but don't put combat behind them. Anyone made Lord of the Rings the game for the the game part? <laughs> <laughs> we found one of the lost elven amulets already. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> but <laughs> Pippin is riff tracksing the video game he's in. I don't know this for a fact, but off the top of my head, this might be one of the earliest cases of a video game making a self-referential joke about its own lazy design. Yeah! What what year was this? This this was 94, so there may have been some before this, but- I mean, Monkey Island. I, I guess a, con- a console game. Yeah. 
No, that seems pretty normal for computer games by that point. You know, before the SNES, games with dialogue were a lot rarer, so... Uh, opportunity for jokes was rarer. Okay, we still have all four hobbits. What, what's our, um, staffs looking like? Sam, full health because he never leaves the side of the screen. Mary, full health. Frodo, two points down. Pippin is almost dead. Pippin looks so old, or like a like maybe like one of the Lost Boys. Also, I'm controlling Mary and Pippin together. It looks like is this a Mary and Pippin talent or a glitch? You know, with a game like this, I don't know if there's a difference. <laughs> it's a bug or it's a feature. I don't. I don't really know. I don't care. <laughs> a bug is just a feature you haven't enjoyed yet. These orcs feel very Warcrafty to me. Mm, they're so bright green. Yeah. <laughs> they have to stand out on the grass, I guess. But it looks like they're, like, made of ecto-cooler. <laughs> <laughs> they're definitely not the Bakshi orc designs. <laughs> Some of these orcs are just one-hit kills. That's how Rather Dashing dies. Oh, speaking of Rather Dashing, I am wearing my Scalding Lake shirt because... <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Because... I, didn't, I, I, I left mine back in... Uh... Georgia, I didn't pack it. I'm mostly wearing mine because it was what was next in my shirt drawer, but also because it's another, you know, it's another fantasy-based game. <laughs> Where someone turns into a skeleton and then shatters in a pile of bones and only a few pixels. Do you love Peasant's Quest as much as me? I believe we've established that I do. Oh yeah, we did stream it together, that's right, sorry. I, I, I believe, well, Casting Leone streamed it with Link. <laughs> wow, they sound an awful lot like this. Although people don't think that Castiglione sounds like you. I haven't listened back to it, but I feel like by the end of that stream, he was sounding more and more like me. <laughs> I found a letter. Old man oh, Willow. Here, you know, I have a surprise for you. Old man Willow is writing letters? Hey, Ooh. how do they know where to deliver these? I, I guess semi-spoilers for the latest season of Our Flag Beats Death, but in a very Steed Bonnet way, they're just hoping they show up at the right place. I mean, that's season one. He he doesn't even know, has no way of knowing they're stranded on an island and then shows up in a dinghy somehow. Yeah. Old Man Willow wrote a letter and left it here in case some hobbits came by. Does Old Man Willow have stationery? It seems like he's going to flash us. Is what is the gist I'm getting from the text. That's concerning on its own, but I am also separately concerned by... Did a tree write a letter on paper? Oh, it's fabric leather. There we go. I'm guessing this looks old man willowy because that looks like a big, big bad face. Is he going to flash us? And also, how will he flash us? <laughs> Which branch on the tree looks the most phallic? And that's how he mm. flashes. But also, uh, we're here, and I don't know what the surprise is, so uh, maybe that's not Old Man Willow. Maybe that's just a different tree with a scary face. That's the Great Decker tree. Oh, here's our Bombadil. Oh my god, wait, he's in the cave? And it looks like he's only going sideways like an Atari character. Does he not have a front-facing sprite? We'll find out. I can't believe Tom Bombadil's in the game. Is he going to be played by Tony? Is Tony here? I'm a protector of these woods. If you have any trouble here, let me know and I will help you. That's uh, the extent of the Bombadil Exchange, I guess. Um, also, where the Tony Bombadil and... Exchange is my new action film. The the Bombadil Exchange. Matt Damon in. <laughs> also, I can't go uh, behind the house. It looks like. Yeah, it's really looking like Bombadil only has um, <laughs> sideways sprites. You need to do a re-edit of uh, of last year's sketch with Tony always at profile. Oh, always facing sideways. <laughs> and then have him turn around but edit out the middle frames. I feel like the game may have glitched because the other hobbits are gone as if they were captured by Old Man Willow, but I never saw that happen, and Bombadil's not reacting. Did we, we break it? We might have broken it. Let me go back to Old Man Willow and see, uh, see what's what. Ah, his mouth is closed now. Well, uh, the graphic is slightly different than it was last time we saw him. That's good. Also, I found a book. The writing is in Elvish. I will have to give it to an elven elder for translation. <laughs> I, do they work like that? Like I, like the Church of Mormon? <laughs> if it's like a church hierarchy calling someone an elder, do you know do you know who that makes Hugo Weaving's character? Elder Elrond? Elrond Hubbard. <laughs> 
You are correct. I think I have to show, I have to equip the note and show it to Bombadil. That's how. Old oh, Man Willow has eaten my friends. Can you help me? That's Old Man Willow is nothing but trouble. He always bothers passersby. Go back to your friends and I will help you. I forgot how much of this game was just equipping bullshit to press the button to show to it's like it's it's like it's kind of a point and click except without any of the uh intuitive interface of a point and click you, you, that sounds like something max would say yeah. except without any of the intuitive interface like usually for snes games just having the inventory item when you talk to the person isn't up like <laughs> yeah this was a choice i got little hobbits i will get you out there's one of them there's two of them. Thank you for helping us, Tom. Did we get anything for that, uh, adventure? Maybe you can go behind his house now. His only front-ish facing sprite is playing the flute. And he couldn't have been playing the flute in that other scene for what, for, for what reason? He needs to play the flute to deal with fucking old man Willow, I guess. Okay, so it's a, it's not a, it's not a decorative flute. It's not for entertainment purposes. Most of what he accomplishes he in the book he does by singing. So I guess they just couldn't animate singing. They uh, had to animate. No, that is how he sings. He has very strange anatomy, different from us hobbits. Fair. He grows a long protuberance <laughs> that he presses with his digits. You knew this about about Tom Bombadils, yes? I knew the theory, but I didn't uh, have it confirmed until now. <laughs> so we didn't really seem to get uh, anything out of the Bombadil adventure other than it was just a total plot cul-de-sac. And I'm wondering if that was deliberate commentary on the part of the designers because they feel that way about the Bombadil adventure in the book. Um, then again, or or it, was a, it was a future prediction of what Peter Jackson will do, make it completely possible to cut out. Well, I mean, uh, Bakshi had already done the same thing. That's uh, true. Uh, as as did Brian Sibley in the BBC, the 1981 BBC radio adaptation. Ah, as hey. did Brian Sibley in the 1981 BBC radio adaptation. You know what? You know what? Are, are you going to start judging me for babbling about my hyperfixations? <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> I had a whole podcast. I am um actually quite impressed that there is actual fog on the Barrow Downs here. Uh, it, of course, makes it even harder to fucking see. It, it, it looks like a game of Frogger if you focus on it. It's Fogger. Let's try entering this scary cave. When things don't go right the first time, just try a different scary cave. That's what my grandma always used to say. And I would back away from her. I also found a key. Now, what I'm going to guess is, you know, this is really just a theory spitball, and I've never played this game. What if it opens a lock? You know, normally I would say probably, but also knowing this game, I might have to, like, trade it to some rando for some other bullshit. Just, this hobbit doesn't get a name. The snakes? No, that's actually, that's actually a man, and that's <laughs> his name. It's, it's a guy named Hobbit. It's a guy named Hobbit. I think he's, yeah, I think he's a man. Did, did Mary just die? It's fine. Well, how's that going to affect you? You know, if you played a good video game, you might not have to ask yourself those questions. Uh, sometimes game designers do this thing where they make it clear what's going on to kind of benefit you and your experience playing this so you um, like the game better, you know? You know, I, I don't know if you've seen this. It's it's crazy. These kids are doing it. I can't say I have a whole lot of experience with that. Um, with with, with uh these how you say your game. You live a joyless life, my friend. No, I just get joy in things that aren't games. Why is Sam talking when he's left all the way back by the entrance in this area? Oh, Sam, give you a walkie-talkie. You weren't paying attention. But <laughs> <laughs> you know, our Tolkien ain't gonna see it. It don't fucking matter. Give him a walkie-talkie. I don't give a shit. You think the Tolkien estate is gonna play this fucking far into this piece of shit? No. Just write whatever, dude. Have fun with it. Go nuts. Christopher Tolkien was personally playtesting this on the SNES. <laughs> Rage quit way. Christopher Rage quit back at the fucking tree shit. 
Not because of Asgard, <laughs> just because it was too derivative of Zelda. Yeah, no, Christopher Nolan quit hours ago. Go nuts, guys. Like, what does it mean to be a Lord of the Ring? Let, let's get down to the center of that, right? Oh, there it's Lord of the Rings because uh, Sam was calling me on the cell phone. The fuck <laughs> Dude, if you just put cell phones in it, we could straight up, we could turn this into a two-hour movie. Like, an audience might be able to sit through it if we didn't want to just added the convenience of a cell phone to a few scenes. I'm just wandering around aimlessly at this point. I, I'm, I, Dude, same, you know? And and <laughs> thank you for saying it. Because it's nice <laughs> to open up about these things to our younger viewers who assume that, like, someone somewhere down the line knows what they're doing. That's the mistake you make when you're young. You're like, I don't know what I'm doing. My friends don't know what our, uh, we're doing. We're starting to suspect the manager knows what they're doing. But above that, people probably know what they're doing, right? I'm just going to let this barrel white kill me, which is another uh, common feeling you get at, uh, <laughs> at our age. Anyway, I just killed Frodo, so it's appropriate that I'm drinking tea out of my go-away-I'm-killing-off-characters mug. That's hilarious. Does this mean that, uh, is this where Figwit comes in? <laughs> Frodo, or Fwigwit? Frodo was great. Fwigwit. <laughs> yes, I, I am Brett McKenzie now. I just want to run you by something. Figwit was how the, uh, you know, the, the yeah. one of the biggest fan sites, and Brett McKenzie was allowed to post tour dates on it, and that's kind of how they became known outside of New Zealand originally, right? We can agree on that? Okay, without the Flight of the Conchords HBO show, which wouldn't have happened if they weren't known by HBO, likely Kristen Shaw wouldn't have played Mabel because Mel was the role that Alex Hirsch saw his sister in. Okay, so we agree on that. So let's say, um, why was Brett McKenzie in Lord of the Rings? Uh, because everyone in New Zealand was. Okay, so why was Lord of the Rings shot in New Zealand? Because Peter Jackson. So why was Peter Jackson picked as the director for Lord of the Rings? I should know this. It was a movie of his, specifically the one about the uh, the home murders in 1954 in New Zealand. Right, right. That was the one. So that means if those murders did not happen, if that girl and her uh, girlfriend, friend, did not kill her mother, you and I never would have met. That's entirely possible. Um <laughs> Because <laughs> we have just proven that if that murder did not take place, then Gravity Falls did not take place. We still might have met over Homestar or Monkey Island some other way. That's true. I just like pointing that out when I've met people through Gravity Falls or Arfleek Ben's death for that reason. Because I think that's probably why he was considered for Steve. Yeah. Also, um... Yes, Pippin seems to already be dead in my respawn point. I did not do the saving. Uh, the game just decided I'm back here. So, uh, no fool of a took this time around, I guess. This is going to be a uh, Pippinless percent uh, will be the speedrun category of this game. <laughs> I am deliberately walking around in circles here because there is this little alcove here that seems to serve no purpose other than leading to another entrance to the cave that I can get through without exiting into this alcove. I guess it's just there to confuse, like, like it's it's there to contribute to the maze feeling, but it's like- well, The game is designed poorly is only a couple words, Dave. But this is a specific, like this has to be deliberate, right? Like I you mean, don't well, accident- As a great man once said, uh, it's like, what were they thinking? It's a decision, like it's not something you do accidentally. Unless you forgot to put the thing in the outdoor alcove that was supposed to go there. In the book, Bombadil also just helps them through the Barrow Downs, and uh, that would have been a nice uh, way for this level to go. But for now, I think it is time to call it a night on this stream. Uh, this Great fucking time. Yes. This was super fun until it wasn't. Um, <laughs> I hope I kept entertained through that. Ha Charlie, hanging with you was super fun. Tomorrow, I will go live again on the pu on the public channel, probably playing a different game because I think I'm tapped out of uh, enjoying this one for now. Clearly a good one. Well, um, I think what I'm going to dip into tomorrow is a good one. Well, I don't know if it's a good one or not. <laughs> 
Uh, I'm not happy I've heard of it yet. <laughs> you would have heard of it if it was a good one. Well, I have heard of it. Uh-huh. Because you but, you, but you have heard of it. Do you remember the Sierra Hobbit GameCube game I was playing last year? No. I'm thinking... This is related to that at all. It fucking sucks and you know it. There's a Game Boy Advance port. Okay, okay. Are you in denial? Are you stupid? I'm curious is what I am. You, okay, when I said it was a good game, you said maybe, I mean, you said I don't know if it's, you, you, look, okay, in a minute, in a minute, just look at me, look at me in the soul, because I'm, my cam's not on. You know it's not a good game. I know it's probably not a good game, but from the little bit of testing I've done with it, <laughs> It seems better than the GameCube person. It's not. It's not a better game. It's more of a game. You're saying it's the. It's it, like wait, no. This feels like a video game this time. Yes, and that is the bar I am looking at right now. The Sierra Hobbit GameCube is like you haven't ever heard of video games, and a friend is trying to describe them to you. <laughs> That's like that's like that much of a game, and for when you touch the Game Boy Advance, when you're saying it was like, this is what I think games feel like. <laughs> Somebody, a blind man, described a game to me. <laughs> a blind man described a game to you, and it was called The Hobbit, released for the Nintendo GameCube by a company sort of known as Sierra through a couple legal reasons. <laughs> Roberto uh, Williams? No names just make money sometimes. We shall find out tomorrow if that is more of a real game than the game suit game. <laughs> Read it not on quality, but on game. But on just baseline it, definition of a game. Okay, we're calling we're calling zero percent game is <laughs> this is the only known definite. That's when the buttons don't do anything, no matter what you try. <laughs> That's zero percent game. The, from the scale upward, and you you in your imagination would have to determine we don't all agree on percentages here. It's a little based on what we feel, but as long as that is zero and more than that is good, you will judge how much of a game it is. Well, uh, I hope everyone who is in the chat tomorrow puts in their votes for how much of a game <laughs> Game percentage counter on screen. Game percent. I'm sorry we're going to need that in the form of a percent. Ooh.